Let's take a look at another LED floodlight. This one is 100 watts, but whether it is actually 100 watts is debatable. Um, it is from Timu, so it's not maybe up to standards. And the first thing I've noticed if I bring in the continuity tester is, rather predictably, if I go onto the earth bar with one connection and to the case with the other, Nothing. There is no earth. The Chinese do not really do earths and grounds, so that wire is probably floating around inside or jammed haphazardly underneath some glued component. Anyway, first thing to do is bring in my suitable Chinese tester. I don't need the earth wire here because it's not connected. And I'll make sure this is off. Stuff this wire in here. Stuff this wire in here. And we'll see if it actually says 100 watts or it just blows up when I turn it on. This is going to get bright. It's 37 watts. Okay, that means each of those things is 20 watts. That's, I was expected to be around about 50% at worst, at 50 watts, but maybe it's just as well given this area here. Now there is another test I want to do. I shall bring in the meter and I shall put it round to AC current, set it to say 200 milliamps, Move this across to that position there. Turn it on and go from the metal work to ground and see what sort of leakage there is. Or it might just go bang and blow the tips off the probes. So AC, 200 milliamps, turning it on. Going to ground here on my long-suffering solder yarn. No significant leakage. Well, that's nice. That's a good start. Excellent. So sometimes in the large arrays of LEDs, the large panels, you do get leakage. I'm so surprised I'm actually thinking, did I even do that right? I think I did do that right. Yes, that is correct. I shall make sure I put this back over here. That's not seeing a blown the fuse in that thing at some point. Anyway, let's proceed with investigating this. So I shall put this out the way. And sadly, there are no screws. I can see in the back here. It's not too hot, that's quite good. I can see in the back there are uh, these positions that they've screwed the circuit board inside, but sadly it looks as though the glass is glued in and I don't think this is going to come out easily. I don't think my spudger's even going to make a, an impact in this. It's just going to make scrunchy glass noises like that and send bits of debris all over the place. So I'm going to get the Dremel and I'm going to cut the, the whole thing off so that we can take a look at the panel inside. One moment please. The dremeling is complete and I've made a huge mess. This is not unusual. Off comes the front to reveal. A little flimsy plastic light guide. Isn't this just going to melt really if it was used at any decent power? Um, and I'll put that down there. The circuit board is inside. They're just glued in there. Those pillars there, I thought they were going to be screws, but they're not. Um, the modules are literally just two modules and then there's a separate uh, current regulator to them a linear current regulator there's the earth wire i'm surprised it didn't get a connection look it was just so close just touching the case like that but really just floating the wind here and the cable entrance i mean it was jammed through i think maybe that they did make an effort to actually seal that because it's a fairly solid block oh and they've glued it in as well lovely nice uh, but the cable does come through, which means the water could have crept through the middle of the wires and uh, into the case. So I'm going to take a picture of this and we'll just explore that. Not that there's a huge amount to see, but it's worth doing anyway. One moment, please. OK, let's explore the circuit board. I'm kind of regretting not brushing the dust off this circuit board before taking a picture, but that's OK. We have two fusible resistors that input 30 ohms each, orange, black, black, 3, 0, and 0 as a decimal multiplier, so just 3, 0. We have a metal oxide resistor, fairly common, a bridge rectifier, a 10 nanofarad capacitor measured in circuit, so that should actually in this instance be okay. We've also got another 10 nanofarad capacitor over here, and then we've got three EG1000 AC uh, linear current regulators, each with a 7.5 ohm current setting resistor. Let me show you now, incidentally, LA30W. Is this designed as a 30 watt driver module, perhaps? It was just over 30 watts. Not bad for a 100 watt light. Let's take a look at the schematic. The schematic uh, 
Here's the AC supply, there's the two 30 ohm resistors, there's the metal oxide varistor across that. We have the bridge rack far, the 10 nanofarad capacitor, and then the positive rail goes straight to the LEDs. The Each LED is labelled as a 70x, well, or 70 star 60, so 70 by 60 millimetre, and then 1B72C. What that means is it's only a single uh, circuit in parallel, so effectively just a single circuit, of 72 LEDs in series. I'm not sure why B means parallel and C means series, but it's what they do. There must be a reason for that. I measured 205 volts across the LEDs, but keep in mind that would have been a choppy waveform, so um, I'm not I'm guessing that's fairly accurate though. Hold on, let's just double check that with the kink calculator. The kink calculator says 205 volts dropped across 72 LEDs is 2.8 L volts each, which is about right, actually. So that's a reasonably good result. It would be somewhere in the region of 3 volts per LED chip. Here are the EG1000 AC drivers, all in parallel, with their SIM.5 ohm programming resistors that set the current through them. They just give a combined, effectively, higher dissipation across three of them for the current. And then there's a 10 nanofarad capacitor across them. I think the reason for that is that if there's any transients or spikes get through or initially at power up, this is just going to clamp that uh, across that capacitor and avoid any nasty spikes damaging the transistors in these. That just leaves one final test on this thrilling light. The, uh, the wire is finest copper coated aluminium. Let me zoom down this. I shall focus up to about here and then we'll give it the flame test fizzling and melting away and crinkling up yeah that's copper coated aluminium it certainly didn't stick to a magnet so that's to be expected so there we have it the not terribly honest 100 watt timu light and it is interesting to note in the box down here that it says 100 watt. Light decay is less than 5% over 10,000 hours testing. Do you really believe that? Uh, although having said that, it's not driving them too hard. But there we go. It's worth opening because I've never seen them use this. Normally, these modules would have the driver on them. It's interesting to see that they've used the separate driver module and then they've used two separate LEDs and parallel connects across that. So well worth taking apart, quite an interesting light, even if it didn't quite live up to their specifications.